Welcome from the heart of Midland. This is the April 2015 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, MPS Curriculum Specialist for Auxiliary Education and host of the show. And we have a great show for you today with updates from high school counselors, middle school assistant principals, and we'll learn about a Brazilian group of musicians that recently toured our schools. I remember you can watch the show on our YouTube channel. Just go to the school website, www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube button on the top right-hand corner of the page, and you can get all of our shows and information there. You can also catch us on Charter Cable Channel uh, 190 or UVerse Channel 99. To start off today, we'll meet Paulo Padilla. Paulo recently toured many of our schools playing his famous urban samba music. Paulo is a well-known composer in Brazil, and he's famous for his carnival songs. And while in Midland, he presented his music and workshop about Brazilian culture to over 2,000 of our students from many of our schools. Now, we had a chance to sit down with Paulo between performances uh, and learn about Brazil and his music. So here is Paulo Padilla. Well, hello and welcome to MPS TV. My name is Scott Cochran. I'm the Midland Public Schools Curriculum Specialist for Auxiliary Education. And I'm excited to welcome you today to the Midland Center for the Arts. We're here with Paulo Padilla from Brazil. And, he, and he's here this week uh, to visit uh, the community of Midland and our schools and talk about Brazilian culture and share some of his music. So, uh, Paulo, welcome to Midland. Okay, we are, we are very happy to be here. Yeah, it's been a great week. Now, you've been in schools throughout the town all week long. Yeah, yeah, very, very different schools and very different ages. Yep, everywhere from it's elementary great. to middle school and high school. And how was yeah. the week on? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah, very, very nice, very nice. Been a little cold for you, though, I would guess. <laughs> Very cold for us. But we are kind of used to this yeah. weather. Now, you're from Brazil. Where are you from in Brazil? I am from Sao Paulo. Okay. Sao Paulo is a big city in the southeast near Rio de Janeiro that maybe you know better. Sure. Yeah, everybody, everybody thinks about Rio when they think about Brazil. Now, tell, yeah. us, tell us about Sao Paulo. It's a very big city. Yeah, it's one of the, the biggest cities in the world. Uh, I think that the fourth one. I'm not sure, okay. but we have uh, almost 20 million people there, and it's a very important economic city, the, the most important city in Brazil. So we have a, a very cosmopolitan urban life there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how did you get into music? So you're a musician. What do you do in music, and, and how did you start? Um, uh, I play guitar uh, since I was nine. And I think that my, 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 my fathers, my parents, they are a very strong influence for me because they are not musicians, but my, my, my mom loves to sing for me uh, since I was okay. young, and my father plays violin. Okay, great. So you had music in your life for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of music do you enjoy playing? I enjoy to, to play every kind of music, but some, some music that... that uh, swing. I prefer the, 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 the music uh, in the U.S. Uh, I prefer kind of black music, R&B, uh, more than rock and roll. I'm not so rock and roll in my... Yeah. Uh, but I, I like rock and roll too. Uh, and in, in Brazil, uh, I love the, the, the Brazilian singers and composers from the, uh, from, uh, the, the 60s, Caetano Veloso, Gilberto Gil, uh, João Gilberto, Bossa Nova, and the oldest too, from the 30s, that, the, 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 that be begins the, this kind of urban samba in Rio de Janeiro, when the radios begins, when you have kind of uh, the big orchestras here, and we are, when you are kind of creating the blues, we are creating the samba there. Okay. Now, what is urban samba? Tell us about that. Yeah, well, the, the samba, uh, or, originally, it's... Uh, it's not so urban, but uh, when he went to, from Bahia to Rio de Janeiro, to Rio de Janeiro, uh, and the, the era, uh, the age of radio uh, was becoming, yeah. you have so, so many people in this city that was a big city, and, and so many people that ha has not too much uh, work, and, st and, and starts to, to to create this kind of thing in the streets, uh, mixing cultures and maybe studying some uh, European music and trying in mixing 
naturally with uh, uh, Candomblé religion, uh, African religion, and it's created uh, this samba that is the samba that we play in the cities. So how would, for folks that don't listen to samba, what's the, is, can you play a little bit, or what's a samba beat, or how do you know you're hearing samba? Okay, uh, we have, uh, uh, thinking about the rhythm, okay, we have the, the 16 notes, 16 notes played uh, like this. In a kind of shaker that we call ganza. And you have the, 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 uh, the quarter note like in the surdu. Uh, let me try to do it. And you have another kind of instruments like the tambourine, uh, trying to play in, in this in this ground. Yeah. Like. That's where you get the swing comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a basic uh, way to to explain. Yeah, that's great. So, <laughs> so you enjoy the samba. Yeah, yeah. And you do a lot of composing, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh, a composer. Actually, I'm more a composer uh, uh, than a singer. So I was doing a little research, and I, I saw a couple of quotes. The Brazilian journalist Kiko Ferreira mm -hmm. uh, described your songs as dancing music with brain. <laughs> and uh, Beto Feitosa uh, said that your music is popular and sophisticated at the same time. Now, do you agree? And what does that all mean to you? Yeah, I'm very proud to, to, to hear it from, from, from them because, uh, because I, I agree, yeah. I try to make uh, good popular music uh, and you have to, to, to make people happy and, and make people feeling different uh, feelings, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time talking with, uh, about subjects uh, that are important, or are, are, uh, I try to mix this, these things: the idea yeah. of, of entertainment and the idea of thinking about. I, I think that the good pop music have have to do this. Sure. So, what are your, some of your songs that you think uh, send really strong messages, or, or are, are your favorites? I don't know. I have so many different <laughs> songs, but uh, trying to example this this idea that we are talking about. I have this song that talk about this is Simi Hela. Simi Hela. That for you is Simi Hela. This is our, the name of, of this note. And it, at the same time, it means in Portuguese, if you touch me or something like that. And I, I did this song, and it's a kind of funny song, but at the same time, uh, it has an important subject because it's about uh, girls. I, I, I work it with a community, a poor community in Brazil that uh, have girls that have to come to the downtown in crowd buses and some kind of man not so so uh, gentle yeah. starts to to to, uh, to get some closer of the, the girls from the back and I, I, I hear, uh, listen to this girls talking about it for me yeah. I, I do this song that is She's saying, don't touch me, yeah. uh, and it's a funny song, but at the same time, uh, the girl is on the bus and the guy starts to come closer and, and then she starts to, to uh, starts to, you know, it's a kind yeah. of, uh, it's a, a example of this, this way I like to, to, to well, that's good. Now we both have teenage daughters, so that's good. You got to teach those girls to <laughs> get, keep their spirit. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's good. What do you um, what What do you like to listen to when you're not playing yourself? What music do you have playing at your house or in your car? Or? Okay, I like to listen different kinds of music. I I, I studied classical music, jazz, with improvisation uh, with uh, American standards. Uh, I love to to I hear Brazilian traditional music since I was young and this yeah. composers from the, the all ages in Brazil. Uh, some pop music and uh, uh, 
American music. I love American uh, U.S. music. Like. Don't have to be Oh, or. Wonder, Michael Jackson, yeah. Prince, and Bob Marley, and let me see, Miles Davis, mm. uh, uh, Gershwin, and different kinds of, of U.S. songs. Sure. In Brazil, uh, Gilberto Gil, Caetano Veloso, Luis Gonzaga, uh, Noel Rosa, uh, Luis Melodia, Itamar Assunção, so many different composers. Yeah. Uh, we have a very strong, uh, we are, uh, the best, I, I think we are the best sure. in the world uh, uh, making songs, uh, songs with lyrics. We, we have uh, so many good lyrics, lyricists. Yeah, sure. Lyrics. Songwriters and lyricists, Song absolutely. Yeah. yeah, That's awesome. So when you are writing for Carnival, which is a, such a big, uh, it seems to us from the outside like a big party or a big, uh, yeah. it's a big event. What do you have to think about for those songs? Because it's not so intimate, you know, it's not so quiet and peaceful, but it's yeah. a big, huge space and lots of people and lots going on. So what are you thinking about when you're, when you're writing those songs? I, I like to, to, to play Carnival, to, to dance and to, to compose songs. But, you know, you have different kinds of Carnival. The one that you see in television is, is just the, the most popular and the most uh, commercial way to, to play the Carnival. You have this big parade for, for the televisions, always uh, filming, and uh, it's a kind of different when you have the, the carnival on the streets, yeah. on, on streets, uh, on little streets blocks with families, and on the northeast you have another kind of uh, of carnival. It's it's a very good party for me, celebration, because it's a way to it's a, a very Brazilian way to. to to be a citizen, to, to stay in the streets, not to be afraid of, of something that could happen in the streets. We have to go there and to, to occup, occup, occupy, occupy, the, yeah, sure. occupy the, 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 space. the streets there, take the space. I think it's a, uh, and we have uh, uh, so many things to, to, to learn to how to do it in, a, in the streets in a, in a, in a good way. So it sounds like for the for the smaller ones, it sounds like more of a community event or a, yeah. a block party where people are getting together and celebrating. Yeah, and yeah. Getting and trying to mix uh, adults uh, with kids all together, uh, uh, knowing how to 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 play this in a, in a sure. healthy and, and safety way. Sure, that's very important. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's next for Paulo Padilla? What's next for you and, and your musicians? And what, what are your next plans? Well, we have to finish the story. We yeah. have more three weeks. Okay. Uh, we are going to DeKalb, Illinois, and then uh, Hanover, Indiana, and then Chicago. And coming to, to, to Sao Paulo, I will, uh, uh, I will give my classes because I'm a music teacher. I am a music teacher there, okay. there too. So uh, my, my life will be more more uh, common yeah. <laughs> uh, when I come back to, to Brazil for a few months and then uh, maybe something <laughs> starts again. Sure, and it always does, <laughs> right? Well, Paulo, it was very nice to meet you and thank you for sharing your music and your Brazilian culture with us here. It's, it's been a pleasure for us. Yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Paulo and his friends from Brazil were the fourth group we've had to tour our schools in the last two years, along with groups from Israel, Quebec, and China. And we'd like to spend a special thank you to our partners from the Midland Center for the Arts and from the Arts Midwest World Fest uh, for helping to make that happen. It's been a wonderful experience for all of our students. Now up next is our newest show, Surviving Middle School. A middle school is a wonderful time, but it can also be overwhelming. So this show will be about tips and strategies for students and parents to help get the most out of those fast-moving three years. So here are Paul Schroll, the assistant principal from Jefferson Middle School, and Lori Pritchard, the assistant principal from Northeast Middle School, with the first edition of Surviving Middle School. This is April's edition of Surviving Middle School. My name is Paul Schroll, and I'm assistant principal at Jefferson Middle School. And I'm Lori Pritchard, assistant principal at Northeast Middle School. Great. Well, we have some tips for you that we're going to share. and. Um, 
Today's edition will focus on communication. Communication is paramount. Um, a lot of communication uh, between parent and child and teacher at the elementary school, we know that that is in place. Well, it doesn't end when you uh, enter middle school. As a matter of fact, it becomes uh, even more important. As a middle schooler, these children, soon to be young adults, are preparing for high school. And so um, Mrs. Pritchard and I, uh, part of our job is to keep that line of communication open. And so we have some tips for you here today. One of the first things is to become very, very familiar with Home Access Center. Home Access Center is a feature that's an online program that allows parents to, number one, check the demographic information and be sure that all of the phone numbers, emails, address, everything like that is, is accurate. That's important because um, we have an automated dialer system, for example, that every night past 4 o'clock p.m., it automatically dials any student who had a coded absence for that day. So if a student was tardy for first hour, then the automated dial dialer would call home and notify the family that there was a uh, code of tardy for first hour. Um, so that is important to keep updated. One of the other features of the Home Access Center is that it allows uh, parents to see the student's current schedule and next semester schedule, and also to have a list of the student's grades. And um, certainly that is very, very important to know on a week-by-week -week basis how students are doing. And, um, and that's available online and can be accessed here um, at the public library if there's not computer or internet at home by a smartphone and um, by most other internet devices such as laptop or computer. Certainly. Um, parents, it's very important for you to take advantage of the form of communication that uh, best suits uh, your abilities as well as the one that you feel most comfortable with. We have teachers who use Twitter. We have teachers that use uh, an app that's called Remind that is a text and an email uh, combination. We have, stu we have teachers that use Moodle and so that's a uh, web-based uh, way to communicate. And then we have some teachers that use a good old-fashioned paper pencil and they provide a syllabus at the beginning of the year um, that describes the class uh, that they have uh, with your child. It, uh, my suggestion for you is if, uh, if a teacher has a syllabus that you ask for an extra copy. Often the teacher asks for you to read it over, look at it, if you have questions you ask those questions and then you sign it and you send it back. Um, and so it's often uh, a benefit I think to uh, have a copy of that so that you don't have to remember what, what you read. You can actually have a copy and, and review that as necessary. One of the other things that the teachers might include in the syllabus um, are access codes to um, internet books mm -hmm. and internet texts. A lot of the times, um, the at least back in the day, mm -hmm. um, I would say to my parents, if I forgot my book, I can't do my homework because my book is in my locker. Well, today's day and age, you don't need to have your book at home to do your homework because there's online resources and often a full text available to you on the internet is so long as you have a passcode. And that information is usually contained within a syllabus um, or is given out within the first week of school. So that's another piece of communication that's very vital um, in the first week or so of school. Certainly. Uh, our next topic is planners. Your student, <coughs> whether they're at Northeast or Jefferson, is provided a planner. Now students can benefit from the use of the planner greatly. It really provides a, uh, a three-way communication, parent, student, and the teacher, uh, so that they can collectively um, communicate about daily assignments, about <coughs> upcoming uh, projects. Um, if, the, if a teacher has a concern, they can share it through the planner. Student uh, or uh, parent can share information back to the teacher. Uh, it's a great way to stay organized. Um, an organization is a skill for middle schoolers that we really want to have in place by the time that we, they leave and become high schoolers. Um, there's a lot of extra information in the planners, uh, s general school information. Um, the phone number for in, the home or the attendance hotline. Yep, important numbers, dates. Uh, there's also a copy of the student handbook, which is always a uh, benefit to have. Uh, we like the students to and parents to uh, always have a copy of that. Um, something else that I think is very important um, for students is that they, um, as they work through the planner system and they develop their own strategy to uh, keep their uh, assignments uh, organized, possibly then having a parent sign it, 
the teacher can sign it. It's a, it's a great way to, for everyone to be on the same page. And so I think the planner is mm -hmm. a great opportunity mm -hmm. to develop that. And it's fairly private. The, the students aren't sharing their planners mm -hmm. and what is written. And so uh, parents can feel free to write a note to the teacher, uh, whether um, it's about uh, praising. So we, of course, we celebrate um, uh, uh, good things that happen, and uh, or it's, if it's a concern. So it's it's always a great way to share. And communication is just it's going to be the best way to avoid. Um, misinformation, which I think can lead to a student having a missed assignment or a poor assignment. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just want to promote that as best we can. The planner is one of the things that parents can use for a two-way communication. Um, and as you were saying, Mr. Schroll, um, you know, if they use it every hour for all the cores or all their classes and they write what that daily assignment is, 90% of our teachers write what the assignment is right on the board every day. Mm -hmm. And if they copy that down verbatim and then um, the parents are looking at it as well and requiring, let me see that homework assignment, it's a great tool and really a great communication piece as long as it's used every day. It, mm -hmm. The consistency is definitely an important variable. Certainly. Um, the other thing that we um, had in, before we conclude is just simply the um, old standby, just talk to the teachers directly. Um, whether that be through calling and leaving a voice message mm -hmm. or an email, a lot of the teachers are very willing to meet with you on their conference and prep before or after school. And just as well, a lot of the teachers provide those same opportunities for the kids. So is there anything else that you want to add about of talking with teachers? Well, I think that we have hit the three very most important pieces of communication from school to home and from home to school. And that is um, home access center, uh, the planner use, and then finally, uh, just getting to know your teacher. And so whether you volunteer in the building or whether you uh, have time to communicate with the teacher, we just know that that is going to be the best way for you to stay connected to what's happening at school. And then that's the best way to set your child up for success. That wraps it up for April's edition of Surviving Middle School. Well, thank you, Paul and Lori, for those ideas, and we look forward to hearing from you again next month on Surviving Middle School. Now, the final segment of our show today is the latest update from Counselor's Corner. So we have counselors Lori Hallberg and Jill English to cover the most important information for our high school parents and students as we start the uh, final quarter of the school year. Hi, welcome to the spring edition of Counselor's Corner. I'm Jill English and this is Lori Halberg. and today we are here to give you information from the counseling centers at Dow High School and Midland High School. We are now in the final marking period of the school year so this would be a good time to start checking home access center on a regular basis. It's really important for students and parents to be monitoring um, their progress in each class at this time to make sure that they're staying up on assignments and that they are receiving a passing grade at this point. And this would be a good time for parents to contact teachers if they have any questions regarding their student's progress in any class. Also during this time, we will beginning some, be beginning something new this year called MSTEP. And this is part of the state standardized testing and it will begin at both high schools in mid-April. This will affect all juniors. They've already taken two days of testing. They've done the ACT and the work keys. And the end step will be an online portion. It will include four days of testing online for each junior in the high schools. And they will be testing for two hours in each of those four day time periods. So really eight, eight hours total for each junior. And this will be in the middle of April. Another thing that will be affecting juniors will be uh, registering for Parchment. Parchment is the online transcript program that is used when these juniors actually become seniors and they start getting ready to send their transcripts on to colleges. So the counselors will help them get registered with a username and a password. We will teach them how to go on and request a transcript and then beginning really after August 1st, they could begin requesting a transcript to send to colleges that they plan to apply for. In addition to registering for parchment, the counselor, counselors will also be doing a college search with all of the juniors or helping them with post-secondary plans after high school. And lastly, to kind of round out the school year, another big portion that the counselors will be doing will be running the AP and the IB testing. 
So this would be something that the students would have already registered for by spring break. So they would have registered by the end of March um, to take any AP or IB tests that they plan to do. They will be testing in the month of May. And the students will be given specific times and places to report for these tests. And depending on their scores, they could potentially earn some college credit. I know seniors are really excited for the end of the year and want, looking forward to what is the next step. But before they leave us, we have one more form for them to fill out, and we call it our senior exit form. It's just a sheet that lets us know where each student wants to go or what their plans are for after high school. And along with that, we also ask them to write down any scholarship money that they were offered, even if it's from a, a college that they are not going to attend. We like to add, a, add up this amount and see how much money was offered to the senior class. Um, one more thing that seniors need to do who are planning to attend college th the following year is that they need to send their final transcripts. And Jill talked about using parchment. Seniors will go on to parchment and request their final transcript to be sent to whichever college or post-secondary area they're going to be attending next year. So seniors are looking to get on to the next level where current eighth graders are looking to move up into the high school. So we have ninth grade orientation. Both schools have an orientation for incoming ninth graders. At Dow High it's done in May and at Midland High it's done in August. And this gives incoming ninth graders a chance to get into the building, have a tour, just to feel a little more comfortable with what the next year is going to bring for them. Another thing that a lot of students do over the summertime is they volunteer at different places. We do not have a specific volunteer form, but it's always a good idea to keep track of those hours. Sometimes on different applications for scholarships or um, college applications or even job applications may ask if you've done any volunteer work. And so I would just recommend keeping track of where you volunteered, how many hours, and what type of volunteer work you did. One other thing that mostly juniors would do over the summer is to visit different colleges and get an idea of where are they looking to go the following year. To do that, you can obviously just go to the college, but if you make plans ahead of time, then you're able to see more and to get a better feel for the school. If you go to the individual college's website, sometimes they have specific dates set up so that you can go on a certain date. They have tours already, already set up and uh, maybe visit the classroom, see what the dorm is like, have lunch in the cafeteria, um, talk to students, professors, just get a good feel for what the college is about. And it's good to do this to really get a feel for the college because you can read about it or see pictures but until you go and visit it you don't really know if that's where you want to spend your, your time or not. So this concludes our uh, Counselor's Corner. Join us in the fall when we will return with more information for you.